Hello my friends, Paul here in the Rojobi Music Workshop and uh, welcome to this kind of an update to my uh, July 2024 shop update and um, kind of uh, a look at a, a new project I guess. Um, so before I get into that I just want to clear up a couple of things which I didn't make clear in my July shop update. <coughs> I, um, I said that I'm closing the shop down. I want to make it clear that I'm not closing the workshop down. I'm, so I'm still doing uh, instrument repairs, refurbishment, restorations, restrings, the, the whole works, even commission builds if people want them. Um, I'm just not keeping the actual shop open anymore. Once I've got rid of all my stock, I mean it's staying open until, until all my stock is gone. That could be who knows, weeks, months, years, maybe, I, I don't know. Um, but I am not closing down the workshop. I'm still doing all of the work I was doing before, plus a bit more. Um, so, like I said, I'll still be doing repairs and, and things for customers for on their instruments. And, um, you know, I'll probably still do commission builds as well. If people want an instrument built, I'll still do it. I've still got all the materials, all the tools, all the knowledge and skills. I can still do all that. Um, it's just that the actual shop itself wasn't really making any money and it, you know, it just really isn't viable. Um, but because, you know, the, the unit I've, that I've got the guitars in, I've also got the, um, the uh, music classroom that I've built. So now it's making money. So it doesn't really matter how long it takes to get rid of all my stock. It really doesn't matter because now the unit itself is actually making money with the, the music lessons. So it's not a problem. So I just wanted to clear that up, um, you know, things are still going on as normal and, and then some really. So as I'm not going to be building any more instruments for myself or for the shop, I thought, hmm, I need to get into some other projects, what can I do? And then I was rummaging through some of my stuff and I came across something which I've had for oof, three, four years, I don't know. Um, and it's in this dusty old case. Uh, now some of you might recognise what kind of case this is. Uh, so just to give you a backstory on this, um, a customer came into my shop three years ago, might have been more, uh, with a violin, that's what's in this, this case, and um, wanted me to, basically just wanted me to restring it. Well I didn't have time to have a look at it while the customer was there. I said, well look, leave it with me, you know, I'll have a look later and I'll give you a call and, you know, tell you what's what. Well, when I had some free time, um, I opened the case up and I found this. Oh, the bow's just falling out. Okay, now on first glance, you might think, that's a nice looking little violin. Not, not an expensive one by any stretch of the imagination, but quite nice looking. And it is. So let me just grab it out of the case. So the bow's just fallen on the floor, so I'll pick that up. That's the bow. Okay, I've, I've loosened off the, I don't know what it's called, but the nut at the end, I've loosened it off so that it's not under tension. So, this is the violin in question. Um, on the face of it, looks pretty good. It actually looks to me as though it's hardly, if ever, been used. There isn't a scratch on it, not a mark. I mean, you can see it's the cheapest, 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 nastiest violin on the planet. <laughs> um, so it, it does have a few blemishes in, in the finish and stuff, but it, it's not scratched or marked at all, which tells me it's probably never been played. Um, now, it is a cheap one, obviously, and the, the, the body is, is plywood, I can see that through the sides of the F-holes, I can see that it's ply, not really a problem. The neck is plastic. What? Yes, it's a plastic neck. So, I took it out of the case, I took one look at it and thought, nah, I'm not doing anything with that. It's a toy, basically. I mean, so I did start to try and uh, tension the strings up and this is what I got. I don't know if you can see that. The neck flexes. It twists 
is absolutely useless. It's a plastic neck. You try and get the strings up to tension and the neck just goes like this. It's absolutely, utterly, totally useless. It is nothing more than a toy. I don't know what they paid for it, but if it was any more than 500 baht, which is about 10 or 12 quid, they've been ripped off. Because it's a toy, it's not, it's not a proper instrument. This neck is completely useless. It's plastic, um, the fretboard is plastic, the neck itself is plastic, the headstock, obviously the heel as well, it's plastic. So when you try to get that to tension, it just bends. Absolutely useless. But as I said, the body is is um, is ply, and um, you know all, all of the, this. I don't I don't know the name of any of the pieces, but this this and this it's all plastic. Um, they're probably usable. These these pieces are probably usable, and the body itself is usable. Possibly even the strings, although they do look like really cheap, nasty things. But you know they might be all right to set it up. But what I'm going to try and do with this is remove this neck, this plastic neck. Remove it carefully. A, I don't want to damage the body and B, I don't want to damage the neck because I want to try and make a proper neck for this out of wood. Uh, and then it will be a viable instrument, not, not a, by any means a, you know, a quality instrument, but viable, playable, <laughs> usable. So I want to, you know, take it all apart and uh, try to very carefully remove this neck. I don't know how that's going to go. It might be a disaster. It might be all right. And I want to remove it all in one piece to use it as a template because it's all the right shape and dimensions and everything else for a violin neck, albeit made out of rubbish, cheapy, shitty plastic. <laughs> so, yeah, I want to try and make a proper wooden neck for this. I don't have the wood at the moment, but that's by the by, because, um, you know, it's going to take me a little time to get to that stage. Now, having a closer look at it, the back, um, where it goes up to this um, neck heel, it looks as though this and this is all one piece. So I'm guessing that even that little cap there is made of ply. And uh, you can possibly see the join where it joins onto the neck heel. So I'm guessing that, that this part, all of this here, the neck heel is plastic and then this is wood stuck over it. So it looks as though I'm probably going to have to very carefully try to remove that before I can remove the neck. Not a problem. Well, shouldn't be. So first thing I need to do is to start to strip this down. So I'm just going to get the case out of the way and rest this on the bench and I'm going to drop the camera down so that you can see what I'm doing hopefully <laughs> um, right so let me just turn that round a bit I think that's fairly well in shot okay so first thing I want to do is remove this uh, chin rest I think that's right now um, so it, it's it's on the top of the body here. It's got a bracket that comes out of it there and then underneath. And there's little, um, uh, little holes in these sleeves, I'm going to say, which I think you turn around to undo it to take it off. So let me just get a piece of wire to do that. Um, I say wire. I've got these uh, thin uh, steel rods, um, which looks like it'll be ideal for that. So... Uh, let's see, okay, so I'll just turn those carefully and uh, try to remove this chin rest. Why is that not moving? There we go. Okay, so th this is the first job, just to strip the thing down and see what we've got. Uh, I'm not going to get too far with this on this, this video. This is just an introduction to it really. Um, hopefully I'll get it stripped down and we'll see you know, basically what we've got. All right, so that's off. And uh, you can see that underneath this part of it we've got some cork pads, obviously to pre protect the, the, the wood. <laughs> I say wood. And there was one on the, on the back here as well, so I'll just carefully take that off. 
Actually, I can leave that on, that's not a problem. So that's the chin rest off. Um, now, all the strings are already loose, um, so I should now be able to remove uh, the tail piece. So it's got a, a plastic, well, it, it, it is plastic coated, but it will be wire underneath. It's got a loop and under the, uh, around the end pin. So there you go, just hook that off, and that's come off. Whoa. And now, <laughs> All the strings have, have come out of it, so that's that bit removed. Um, I may as well go ahead and uh, remove the strings and the tuning pegs as well. Um, to be honest, I'm not sure I'm going to reuse these strings. I will keep them. I might use them just, just for a setup when I get to that stage, but that's a long way off yet. So um, I'm just going to uh, remove the strings. Where's that one gone? Bit there. That's that one. Okay. So remove the strings first and the tuning pegs. That's that one. Oh, that's going the wrong way. That's weird. That's uh, it's kind of wrapped around itself there. I'll come back to that one. That's that one. Whoa! Now I am absolutely no violin expert. I mean, I know the basics of how things go together. Uh, incidentally, the, the bridge is not on it. The bridge is wrapped up in this piece of paper. So that's, uh, that's protected, that's in the case. Uh, okay, so let's um, get rid of that string. Okay, that's three strings off, three pegs out. This one seems to be a little bit tangled up in there. So let's see what I can do with that. Oh, there we go. All right, that's that. Got that. Okay, so all the strings off and all the tuning pegs out. Uh, okay, so I think I'll now try to remove the fingerboard. I don't think it's called a fretboard on these because there's no frets. <laughs> I think it's just called a fingerboard. I'm just going to put all the bits and pieces uh, into the case out, out of the way. <coughs> now, as for the, the fingerboard, um, yeah, like I said, it is plastic. Um, I don't really, and again, I want to keep that keep that as a template. So I'm going to try and carefully pull that off. I don't think it's going to be stuck on as much. There we go. Off it comes. There we go. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh, no wonder the thing was flexing. Not only is it plastic, but it's hollow. <laughs> what a piece of junk! <laughs> Uh, yeah, so that's not going to be much use for anything apart from as a template. In fact, it's essential for the template, uh, for the exact dimensions and, and shape and everything else. So the next thing I need to do, I mean, that, that's, oh dear, look. <laughs> yeah, quality. Um, so really, uh, the next stage is to, is to try, as I said, to, to get this part unstuck from the neck and then this uh, unstuck from the body. That's where, um, you know, there could be issues with, with damage. I hope not, but, you know, it is, it is possible. But you saw how easy that fingerboard came off. It's basically, I'm not even sure it was glued, but you've got a couple of dowels in there and you've got location holes in the back of there. I think there was a little dab of glue in there and, and around you know the, the edge here, but you saw how easy that came off. Uh, okay, and you know, as for the finish on this, I mean again it's not high quality, but it is nicely unmarked. So when I'm gonna remove this, I want to try and save that finish and not, not do any damage to that. Um, but I think um, I'm going to leave that at this stage because I need to sort of get get a few things set up to, um, you know, to start to remove that. Um, and I, I'm not I'm not ready for that yet. I didn't think it would come apart that quickly and that easily. Um, but there you go. So yeah, I, I may I'm going to make a start on you know seeing what I need to do to to pry that off um, without damaging it. Oh, let me just. Uh, See if I can take that end pin out as well. Should just pull out because they're normally a, um, 
a tapered fit. Uh, let me grab a pair of pliers of sorts. Um, caref carefully try and tease it out with these. Uh, let me see. It, it may be glued in, they're not supposed to be, but this one might be. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Just popped straight out. Sorry that wasn't on camera, but yeah. Um, that's plastic as well. So they're taper fit, you know, it's just, just a, a hole in the end of the body and they're tapered. Same, same I mean, somebody I watch all the time on, on uh, YouTube describes the, you know, the way that violins are put together. Everything is friction fit and he's absolutely right. So the end pin just is held in with friction and the same with the tuning pegs and the, the bridge is held on the body by by spring tension. Everything is held together by uh, tension and friction on the violin. Nothing is screwed or bolted or glued or anything like that. It's all, you know, tension and friction fitted. So, I'm going to end this video right here. So, uh, and I'll try and figure out, you know, what I'm going to do next and then bring you back in due course. In the meantime, please look after yourselves, look after each other. We will see you soon. Peace out.